Kom nog een langsje lang. Huh. Oké. Okay. You have seen her in Dhobi Ghat. You have uh, seen her in David. You're going to see her very, very soon with Nizuddin Shah and Nazir Shah's son Vivan in an untitled movie. Uh, you've heard, us, heard of her song. Let's sing it together. Duriya bhi hai zaruri Bhi hai zaruri Zaruri hai ye duriya Please welcome Monica Dogra Hello, Shillong. Hey. Uh, so, how was the drive from Guwahati to Shillong? Not bad at all. Not yeah? bad. Is yeah. This is the first time you're coming to Shillong? No, I've been here many times. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I'm freezing, no? But yeah? now I'm warm because I see all of you. Okay. This part of the country, Monica, is, yes. of course, of a course. lot of uh, about music. Correct. Yeah, and that comes very naturally to you. Yes. Uh, it's been how long you've been singing? Um, well, I've been singing my whole life, uh, but professionally, I would say, since I was 21, yeah. So, I mean, and uh, your first Hindi song was, your first Bollywood break was, Duriya Bhi Hai Zaruri. Correct. Do you think it is uh, important to uh, strike a commercial uh, chord as well? Um, I've always been someone to force everyone else to bend to my identity. I've never really... Um, forsaken my own identity to fit in. So I'm here to tell all of you to not fit in, to be different, to make everyone pay attention to who you are. Um, and Duriya, if you heard the song, um, Duriya is not like many other Bollywood songs. And uh, Vishal Shekhar, uh, both of them are dear friends. And um, because of them, you know, I, I sang it. I'm not really... I've never really been out there trying to make it in Bollywood. I've always been out there trying to make it as Monica Dogra. Give us your, your own composition, any of them, just a single line. Okay. We were having negotiations over there. I was like, I don't want to sing unless I practice. I like to practice before I do things. But anyway, here's one that I haven't released yet. Yeah, can I stand? Is that okay? I just sing better when I stand. Yeah. Make sure everything is in the right place. <laughs> everything okay? All right. My pockets are empty. Would you feed me some rain? I got nothing to show you but some portraits of pain. And I'm fading into your fields of gray. Your imaginings are starting to take over me. If I wanted to touch you, would you start backing away? I drink more than I ought to, so I have courage to stay. And I am fading into your fields of gray. Your imaginings are starting to take over me. You're taking over me. You're taking over, over, you're taking over me, oh, please, please, oh. Thank you so much, guys. Get up for Monica. So, Monica, tell me something. Uh, people say music is universal. And... Uh, uh, do you think that it can easily cross all the boundaries and uh, it helps you to kind of be one as uh, anything, I mean, be it in India as, as one, as I mean, as, as an Indian, we have, I mean, uh, a lot of times people speak about the fact that a lot of people from this part of the country have not been able to come to Bollywood. And uh, you were also, in a way, was an outsider for Bollywood, for, for, for the film industry. 
Yeah. So maybe they can feel one with the idea that you coming in and proving a fact and proving a point. Do you think uh, music uh, did that for you? In a way, yes. I do think music did that for me. Um, we all know that music is a is a you know a universal language. It's a uniting force. Um, one of the most oh, I see some people I know now in the audience. Um, one of the amazing things about about music is you can't describe it. You can't uh, like often. How do you describe the way a song sounds? Right? You can only feel it. Why are you shouting? I like you, rebel over there. Tell me more about what you think. I met this guy outside. I was like, uh, he was like, when is Monica coming? I was like, around 4:35. Yeah. He says, just tell her that I have a crush on her. When? Oh. Now. It's okay, dude. I love you too. Um, but yeah, you know, when when you're in the studio and you're describing a bass line, you're like, I want it to sound thick, and I want it to sound, you know wrenching and you use all these words that have nothing to do with sound I'm talking though am I allowed no you want to okay that's true that is very true do you think that helps a lot in uh, forming a relationship as well okay back in the day I had a girlfriend yeah she was in Delhi then she shifted to Shillong that it became she long distance relationship sorry for the bad one <laughs> So do you think it helps in Yay, <laughs> Uncle Joe. <laughs> do you think it helps in I mean um, uh, in building up a relationship as well? Do, 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 does music get them together? Does music develop relationships? I mean, uh, let's say I'm talking about does I mean uh, kya love zyada gehra ho jata hai pyar? Yeah, I think so. I think see, you know studies have shown that music sound vibration creates patterns, right? I've even written a song about it. And if human beings, so uh, do you know about this study? There's a scientist who um, studied certain harmonic frequencies on, on crystalline structures inside of water. And the more beautiful the harmony and the more complex the harmony, the more complex the crystalline structures became. Um, they're all symmetrical. Dissonance causes um, weird patterns, asymmetrical patterns, but harmony creates beautiful patterns. So imagine what that does to a human being if we are how 80% water, 78%. We're, yeah, we're a lot of water. So imagine what that does to us. So even on a spiritual, on a spiritual level, we're changing our bodies by listening to music, by creating sound, by speaking to each other gently, by not screaming. I mean, everything is vibration. The whole you know, the whole universe is vibration. So yes, to answer your question, I do think that you can fall in love more easily with sound. Okay, coming to acting. Yes. Yeah. It's been how long you've been acting? I've been acting since I was five years old, making up plays, being an idiot with my neighbors. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I've always loved the power of play. Okay. Uh, you know. And as we see that your Hindi is not a strong point. How do you yeah. see that? I mean, uh, I was talking to you, you were like, okay, I'm more comfortable with English. <laughs> yeah, because I can't get poetic in Hindi, but... You I think in English? Speak, I think in English. I grew up in America, I mean, yeah. So, I mean, how do you then justify, I mean, um, uh, of course you want to make it big, uh, further ahead in Bollywood. Don't you think that's a barrier? See, I don't that think that way. That might just help these guys who are, who maybe, who, who, are, who are aspiring actors. I mean, uh, in this part of the country, their Hindi is also not very... I mean, amazing, okay. So, if they want to come and be a part of the industry, they might just uh, have to uh, maybe face the same uh, problem which you might have faced back in the day. I think I had a whole speech ready to inspire you about this identity thing. When I arrived in India, one of the biggest reasons why I arrived, why I decided to move here, is because I could live cheaply and create art for a long time rather than struggling in New York and bartending and waitressing and barely making, you know, rent. And I met amazing musicians and it was never in my, you know, it's never been a goal of mine to make it in Bollywood because Bollywood as by definition for me, now that I've met many of the people in the industry, they're dear friends, I work with them, I've acted with them. Almost all of them see the industry as one that is greatly flawed. 
and and most of them would say, Monica, you tour the world with your own music and you you have a band that believes in you, that is your family. I envy you. I wish I could do what you do. So why are there all of these false notions and false ideals about an industry that so greatly needs change? Obviously, it needs change if the very people within it are themselves saying that it needs to change. Um, so when I arrived here, there were no concert halls, there were no festivals. Now we've got hundreds of music festivals in India. Um, most of the time, if people interviewed me, I would hear, so what's your real job? You know, cool, you, you're in a band, but what's your real job? What's your day job? Now it's a viable industry. You can make money, you can become famous, you can have the papers write about you, all based on legitimate work that is active work, it's progress, progressive work. I see art as a form of activism. I see film as a form of activism. It has the capacity to change nations, to move nations, to, to act, to change, to become different, to, to unite a people, like you said, music unites people. So although one would say, like you just said, you know, it's in my sight lines to become big in Bollywood. I would never say that that's a goal of mine, to become big in Bollywood. My goal is to transform Bollywood. That is my goal. And as long as I'm here and as long as I'm alive and I have a voice and I've got talent and I've got things to offer, I will be contributing to change within an industry that I feel so greatly needs it. Okay. Monica, tell me something. Let's have, I was thinking of having little language classes. Not for you. Not for okay. you. Uh, I was thinking ki, uh, the language they speak is called Khasi. I know. Yeah? How many of you can speak Khasi? Of course, all of you, yeah? Okay. Uh, you there, yeah. You have to say that 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 you have that's Hindi, right? That's Hindi, right? No, in Khasi, I'll be coming now. I feel I'm so tall, yaka, banga, ung, ne? All right. Another Khasi. Okay. Can I. Can you give the mic to any girl there who knows Khasi? Do you know Khasi, the girl in pink? Do you know Khasi? Who knows Khasi? Any girl, yeah? What happened? Anyone? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Do chutki sindur ki kima tum kya jano Ramesh Babu? Sorry? Oh, yeah. oh that's a problem. <laughs> okay, somebody who knows Hindi and Khasi both. Hey. Yeah, okay. Do chutki sindur ki kima tum kya jano Ramesh Babu. Let's have a little language. There you classes. go. She's a hero. She's a hero, Shillong. Little mama tips. Yeah. <laughs> whoop, whoop, whoop. These are the people we need more of. Tips, would you do a Bollywood film? Exactly. <laughs> would you do one, though, if I, if I was, say I wrote a script and it was amazing and we wanted to make something that changed the world, would you act in that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's almost a yes. That's almost a yes. Okay, yes. the girl in, in the blue scarf, you, you're about to translate that for us. Yeah, what was that again? I was saying, tum, <laughs> do chutki sindur ki kima tum kya jano Ramesh Babu. You have to translate for us in Khasi. Are these all Hindi dialogues uh, from films? Yeah, yeah. Uh, right. It's going to be tough that way. What is sindur in Khasi? We don't have a word <laughs> for sindur in Khasi, no. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay, coming back to you, Monica, then. I uh, like your hat. On that note, I, we want another love song from you. No. Do you want, do you want, you people, do you want people to sing with you? We have, a, we have a singer there. I think he thinks you're so bored that we have to do all of these filmy things to wake you up. Is everybody feeling okay? <laughs> yeah? Everybody feels all right? You're going to dance and sing for us both, actually. <laughs> of course she has to. Okay. I thought I was going to come here and give this inspiring talk. You, what was, was the laptop like for? You got it along. Flying dialogues from Monica, Hollywood films. have you prepared something in it? Do you have something I, in I it? I did prepare something, but now I think we're, we're what over what? time. Okay, <laughs> okay uh, please pardon my laughter, Hana. Last time I laughed my heart out was on 12th November at 2 a.m. Delhi was earthquake. Today, I was 
तुम्हारे यहाँ कर्फ्यू लग गया यार सो एनी वे सो या वट इज इन दैट वट इज यू प्रिपेयर देन well it's a it's a talk i i mean it's a do you, do any of you guys watch ted talks or are you interested in this sort of thing yeah yeah i see smart people okay do you want her audience. to talk do you want her to sing see i told you do you want her to talk do you want her to dance see i told you do you want to sing do you want to sing and dance with her see guys <laughs> I'm so disappointed right now. <laughs> We will be disappointed if you don't do that for us. Yeah. Come on Monica. Be a sport. Come on guys, give it up for Monica. I can call a guitarist on the stage if you want. Sorry? I can I can call a guitarist on the stage if you want. No, no, no. I uh no, it's cool. It's yeah? Okay. okay, then sing without the guitar then. I'm going to slap him. Can I? Am I allowed? <laughs> Uh I okay No audience is going to sing don't worry Okay Does anybody know about my band Shire and Funk have you heard of my band No no one so that's why he wants me to sing Duria I guess Do you guys go to rock concerts do you go of to course. festivals Shillong yeah. is all about rock concerts And you've never seen Shire and Funk play none of you guys Yeah I played in Shillong at the Autumn Fest exactly it was amazing amazing Well then I I don't mind singing a an original song of mine. You're a great drummer. Yeah. Um I really did think I was coming here to talk though, but fine, whatever. <laughs> um Okay, I'm going to do a spoken word piece. This is the first song I ever wrote actually, ever in my whole life. And it's meant to be done a cappella. But when I'm singing, you can Yeah. And this is kind of the point of what my talk was about so it's good I get a chance to say it. I am a walking metaphor. I am a lover, a girlfriend who takes hit after hit after hit after hit after hit after hit cries when it's over rolls over and says, "Come on baby, give me some more." Oh yes, I am a walking metaphor. Have you found out yet what it is that I stand for? I am a lesbian afraid to come out. I am a Harvard grad suffering from intellectual drought. I am consumer friendly and poor. I've served in Vietnam and Baghdad now. My country says I'm only good for driving a truck. Drive a truck. Is that all that I'm good for? Oh yeah, that's right. I am a walking metaphor. Have you found out yet what it is that you stand for? Take me home in that I'm shown. This body just close our wound. Oh, oh, oh. Take me home. Take me home Take me home Take me home in this I'm sure that this body just close up one oh 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 And while I'm speaking so precisely I'd like to take a minute to speak about the children who will come after me the legacy that i'm asking for you to believe 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 please thank you okay let's take some questions from the audience anyone there Hmm. Yes. That was beautiful, Monica. So what is it that you stand for and what are the things that you would like to transform in Bollywood? You said it's an industry that needs transformation desperately. What are the things that you would like to change? that's such a long i have such a long answer okay we all are you cool um the first thing i i would love to change is our uh, perception of beauty 
Um, the most important one being that women are consistently and constantly objectified and sexualized. And they're meant not to have minds, they're meant not to have voices, and more often than not, they don't. Um, and that's not nice. <laughs> uh, you, you always see these women with identities coming into the industry. Um, identities, meaning they look different, they, they've got interesting faces, they, they're, they're bubbling with something, they look unkempt, they, uh, you know, and then slowly but surely one whitening ad after another and one injection and one nose job and, and before you know it, they're working more than ever before, actually. So as consumers as well, we have a responsibility to buy into the things that create change, that teach our daughters, that teach our children, that they can look different, that they don't have to be a size zero, they don't have to be white skinned. They're in India, for God's sakes. You know? Uh, that's one thing. Um, another thing is, is if we want song and dance in all of our films, then why don't we actually train in song and dance? That'd be great, <laughs> because uh, there's some amazing dancers, amazing choreographers. I'd like to see the choreography in, in Bollywood film um, really express the Bharata Natya Shastra, this amazing thing that has existed long before organized religion. The first form of documented, chronicled art is the Bharata Natya Shastra, the idea of a total work of art. Um, I think that that would be an amazing change, to see a film with great choreography. I mean, of course, we've got some amazing music directors, respect where it's due, and some amazing dances that do come out. But um, if we're going to insert song and dance into each one of our films, then I think we should do it with Elan and class. I'm going to get shot for saying this, hopefully not, but another thing I would love to see is for the royal family that is Bollywood to begin to recognize that being born into privilege is not something to be proud of. It's amazing how many times I've spoken about my struggle, about having been a bartender, a waitress, about, you know, doing films for practically no money just because they're intelligent films. And no one cares to hear about where you come from and your struggle and your story. I like to call it, there's no respect for the hustle. And I know in Shillong there is respect for the hustle, so I respect the Northeast for that, actually. Should I keep going? I should stop. <laughs> I'm going to look at my sister. Okay, I should stop. There's a question there. Can, can you please pass on the mic to her? I don't mean that's to the be last a hater. Question. I'm not a hater. I'll, I'm sorry. I know people often say that I'm a hater. I'm not a hater. I'm more of... Um, I'm like a... I see politics in all art. I see art as being political, so... Thanks. Okay, yes ma'am. Um, <laughs> Uh, hi, uh, I'm, you're an actress. Yeah. I just wanted to you know how you feel about um, Priyanka Chopra sort of playing Mary Comb <laughs> in uh, the upcoming movie. I mean, I feel that a Northeastern girl should be doing the role. So uh, what do you feel about that? Nice question, very nice question. I hate to say this, I like my head is so stuck up my own stuff that I have no idea what you're talking about. Okay, Priyanka <laughs> Chopra. <laughs> okay, I'll tell you. Uh, Monica okay. Priyanka Chopra is doing a movie yeah. which is based on an Indian boxer, Mary Kwan, who oh. belongs to this part of the country. She says that uh, somebody from here should have been playing Mary Kwan than Priyanka Chopra. Oh my God! Yes, 100%. Yes. You know, I. I'm friends with people in every industry. I mean, some of my friends are the heads of marketing for Condé Nast. Um, they take care of GQ, uh, Vogue, um, many fashion magazines. And I know for a fact that roundtable discussions occur where they're like, we can't have women with Asian, with Northeastern features on the cover of our magazine, then our magazines won't sell. We have to whiten the skin. Yeah, 100%, 100%. And it's interesting because they'll continue, I don't know if you've noticed, but magazines will have the same five people on the cover every single month. And they say that our magazine will only sell if 
we put these five people on the cover. And I disagree with that, though, because the media has the capacity to create stars. Everything's interlinked. If more media people believed in certain stars, in certain models, in certain faces, in a certain kind of beauty, the more you project onto people, basically, why does my driver know Akon's music and 50 Cent's music? Why? Why Akon does not belong in India as far as I'm concerned or anywhere really. But it's because these sounds are constantly badgered at you. So our perception of beauty is whatever's fed to us constantly. Feed people something different, they'll open their minds, they'll start to see things differently. I wish the media would really take that role seriously. Put someone from the Northeast on the cover of a magazine and there you go. There you have it. There's a Northeastern woman who's beautiful. Thank it's you. not rocket science. I know a lot of media yep. people are here today. I hope you agree with me. I'm not trying to say you're not doing a good job. It's just, let's take risks, man. Like, why do the same old thing? It's boring. It's really boring. All right. Thank you so much, Monica, for being <laughs> a part of Youth Summit, Mind Rocks. And Thank you.